Well, we have AD 30 and event 28. It's found in all four Gospels, but John has so little detail that we're going to focus in on Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And because this event is kind of separated in time by the arrest and the trials of Jesus, I want to go back and set the stage for the significance of Peter's denial. And by doing that, you'll better understand uh, the actual event of Peter's denial. So we're going to go back and we're going to look at Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I'm going to read them to you. And then we're going to talk about that. And we're going to come back to uh, the actual event of Peter's denial. So let me first read you the lead in, if you will, to Peter's denial. First from Matthew 26, beginning at verse 31. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike down the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. But Peter said to him, Even though all may fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you that this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. All of the disciples said the same thing too. The second passage is found in Mark 14, verses 27 through 31. Jesus said to them, You'll all fall away because it is written, I will strike down the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. But Peter said to him, even though all may fall away, yet I will not. Jesus said to him, truly I say to you, this very night before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will deny me three times. But Peter kept saying insistently, even if I have to die with you, I will do not deny you. And they all were saying the same thing. And finally, in Luke, which adds some information that we've not yet received in the two preceding scriptures, Luke 22, verses 31 through 34. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and you, once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. But he said to him, Lord, with you I am ready to go both to prison and to death. And he said, I say to you, Peter, the rooster will not crow today until you have denied me three times that you know me. Interesting, isn't it? Three denials. That's what Jesus forecast was going to happen. Jesus told Peter that Satan wanted to sift him like wheat. Jesus told Peter and the other disciples that they would fall away, fulfilling the prophecy that the shepherd would be knocked down and the sheep would be scattered. Jesus told them that they would meet them again after his crucifixion and resurrection by the Sea of Galilee. It's important to remember how many prophecies, both long ago and shorter term, Jesus fulfilled. And it's interesting to see that Peter was so insistent, so sure that he would not deny Christ, so absolutely positive that his faith would hold him even in the most difficult of times. Now let's read the actual event of Peter's denial, because in between is the, the arrest and the trials of Jesus. I'm reading to you from the Luke account, Luke 22, beginning at verse 54. Having arrested him, they led him away and brought him to a house of the high priest. Remember, this is the illegal a trial but Peter was following at a distance. After And another disciple was, it also tells us in another gospel. And after they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard, 
and had sat down together, Peter was sitting among them, and a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the firelight, looking intently at him, said, This man was with him too. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, another saw him and said, Are you one of them too? But Peter said, Man, I am not. After about an hour had passed, another man began insisting, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean too. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. Immediately while he was speaking, a rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had told him before a rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. What's even more sad is as we look at all of the accounts of Peter's denial, it appears that Peter's heart even hardened more with each denial. You see, the first time it was in the courtyard with the fire, and it tells us in Mark that this servant girl was the high priest servant girl, so she was pretty aware of everything that was going on. And he says, I don't even know him. And also at Mark, it tells us that uh, this was a, a bunch of bystanders that were standing around hearing Peter's denial. And one of those bystanders came to him again and challenged him and said, you're one of them, aren't you? You're one of them too. And Peter said, I am not. And the man insisted, but he was a bystander and Peter continued to deny him. The third denial that we find is probably the worst, a hardened heart from the first two denials, the first two lies. When this man, a bystander, but one who knew very surely that, Je that Peter was with Jesus, continued to insist, you are one of them, you're a Galilean, you're one of them. And this time it tells us in Mark chapter 14, verses 71 and 72, and also in Matthew chapter 26, verse 24, Peter cursed and swore. <laughs> After that last denial, with a hardened heart, when Jesus, our Savior, turned and looked at Peter, who was so sure that he wouldn't deny Christ. And Peter remembered what Jesus had forecast Peter would do. How ashamed he must have been. He went out and he wept bitterly. He hadn't gone to prison. He hadn't gone to the cross. And he hadn't died. But the pressure of those looking at him and challenging him, who had the power to put him under arrest and death, he denied his Lord and Savior. The question, of course, comes to all of us every time we read this section of Scripture. How many times have we denied Christ in our behavior, in our talk, in, in the pledges and promises we made when things were going tough, and uh, we said, Lord, if you'll just do such and such, 
I'll do so and so for you. How many times have we denied our Savior? I hope that we wouldn't harden our hearts and fail to acknowledge that we have denied him just as surely as Peter did. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you. Have a great day. A sad 